So I was just about to do a video on what is a continuous glucose monitor. And uh, then if you have watched the last two videos, you will know that my blood sugar was spiking and crashing. Well, after my, <clears throat> uh, let's see, after my, uh, I just went through another crash then stabling out. <laughs> Um, but, uh, basically it was like, I guess, 25 minutes after my last video, after having cashews and a little bit of juice, um, it went up to 138, um, which is, it was at 84, so, um, 25 minutes later it was, you know, 50 points or, or so up. Then, um... And that up, I the alarm went off because I set it at 130. Um, I've got it set at 130 as the high and 80 as the low right now because it moves so fast that I need to know when it's going anywhere besides stable. <laughs> um, and so that's when I checked it. Um, also, you know, the alarm is going off. Well, it, it anyway. It checks your interstitial fluid, so this is the uh, this is the sensor. This is the little meter. Um, it's really cool because all you have to do <laughs> is go here and go like this. So let's see. It just went down. I mean, and the, you know, I, I mean, as I've learned, these things are not always exact um but it just went down five points in five minutes um but like i said nothing that not necessarily exact but what i will say is that it has become clear to me that the continuous glucose monitor uh shows what i'm feeling thus i feel that i can uh take it as you know a way to manage my blood sugar versus um, using a regular glucometer where you you know prick your finger I'm not gonna do that 18 times a day I just really don't want to but like I said also things happen so fast that and I didn't know before that like it was going so high so I didn't know to check it all the time I mean it just anyway but yeah, so it just went up and then it just came down. So what I was going to say is that the thing that uh, right before this video, you know, it was a little bit high and then, you know, my alarm went off and it was a little high. And then um, a couple minutes later, it was, you know, down 15 points. And that right there started causing me to shake again. Um, and I was like, wait, it can't be super low already. <laughs> like, it just, the high alarm just went off. Um, and so it went down, but it was going, like, anyway. All of it is just, like, really uncomfortable. <laughs> um, yeah, I just, it's really hard. And so it's finally kind of leveling out. Um, it's at 117 right now, which is okay. Uh, let's just hope that it kind of stays there because one of the things that's been hard is that like eating turns into like a problem sometimes right now I can't not eat because then I won't have any blood sugar but like eating causes this kind of roller coaster for me sometimes and it's a lot to deal with and I guess the, like was it yesterday or the day before I was just like I can't deal with this right now. You know, my alarm would go off and it was like, oh, it's 79. I need to do something about it right now. And it'd be like, I, I don't want to eat anything. Like, I'm going to have to deal with it then, you know? And I just, like I said, it just is hard to to deal with. And um, it's almost like if it's stable, semi-low, I'm like, mm, let's just not eat anything. Which I know is not the way to deal with it, but I guess the like literally in the last like five days I just was getting really uh, frustrated and I didn't have a lot of um, Snacks that I could eat or like I 
I ended up ordering groceries online last night and um anyway <sighs> so now I had more snacks today and I had more um more food that fits what I eat but pretty much I can't have any prepared food like at this point at all because most things that are prepared have things that cause my blood sugar to spike and I am still learning um you know what <laughs> exactly uh because things are it's not even just everything that you would expect right like it, anyway um I'm learning and I'm trying different things one of the things I've realized though is that it's not always the same and so I'm interested in looking at the other factors such as like I said my adrenaline response when I stand up because of my orthostatic intolerance where my adrenaline goes up because of needing blood to my brain um, and that I have low blood volume in the first place um, which I want to do a video about that um, and why I know I had low blood volume and uh, how it affects me and the adrenaline and stuff and uh, that response which is uh, why I'm in a wheelchair at the moment pretty much um, so yeah it's just it's it's this is intense this is very intense and um, I guess you know with these videos I wanted to show you what it feels like uh, to have this happen and I've uh, for years I've written down what I eat um, right like and part of it had to do with that first when I was getting help with my eating disorder um, I had to write down what I eat, ate so that it was so that I was eating enough um, because I was like eating about half of what you were supposed to be eating um, and in my situation and um, so I used like diabetic exchanges at that point which was like interesting that that's when I did that um, but that was so that I could like eat a certain amount of food in general but then after that uh, due to trying to keep myself stable um, with continuing to eat regularly um, for many years I've just written down what I ate every time I ate and also then that helps me to plan out like okay I just ate you know protein and fat now how long can I go you know with my trying to manage my blood sugar the best I could without any kind of other um, help so for many years I've done that and oftentimes that really helps because otherwise I have to remember it all like wait what did I just eat and how long ago and you know it gets it's hard to remember it all especially if I crash so um, yeah thanks for uh, sharing this journey with me and hopefully I'll get more stable <laughs>